Welcome to another YouTube video focusing on contract law. My name is Christopher Neufeld of Neufeld Legal. And in this particular YouTube video, we will be discussing the importance of incentivizing performance and results in contracts. And this can pertain to anything from tech contracts, shareholders agreements, partnership agreements, employment agreements, independent contractor agreements. Now, what tends to be the weakness in a lot of contractual arrangements that you have with other part parties? The weakness that, from experience that I have found, is that performance results are not explicitly set out in the contracts. Yes, it's a difficult thing to gauge at times, and people don't really want to create a bad feel about things. However, when you're bringing in people and certain people are intending to work very hard and to put in considerable amounts of effort and time into the pursuit of a particular goal, which is the objective of the business, really the idea is that you don't want to reward those people who are not putting in what their expectations are which disincentivizes the people who are putting in the real hard work. And then you want to make sure that those people who are putting in the hard work, be it working on weekends, working late nights, or simply just making very effective moves for the business, do not feel that they are not getting properly compensated and incentivized for that additional work while other people are riding their coattails. And this is a major concern, especially as a business grows. People might not outwardly say it. Nevertheless, the one thing you do not want to do is have one or two really good people that you employ, you engage, that you partner with, and this includes yourself, who's really pushing hard on the business, really striving and making real efforts. Oftentimes, it doesn't have to be that the efforts necessarily show major results. But at the same time, you don't want those group of people to look at the other group of people who are just sitting back, playing video games, showing up late to work, not really having any input, and simply say, sitting back and saying, whoa, this is great. This is a great business to be involved in. Thank goodness I joined because these guys are really pushing me forward and I'll do some work. Because oftentimes, the agreements that people have are so templated and straightforward and simplistic that they fail to address these differing levels of effort and productivity. Now, one of the things that's always a challenge is results and trying to achieve results. Now, if somebody puts in less time but achieves an enormous results for the business, that's a great thing and that should be properly rewarded. You don't have to put in sometimes 40, 50, 60 hours to get the results that you need. Nevertheless, the idea is that if you're only putting in less hours than another person, you still have to be working with your expectations and being productive and being something more than just being present, being another body there, unless that is something that was agreed to at the outset. Otherwise, people will be disincentivized from putting in all that effort for the company and for everybody because people are riding their coattail, so to speak, because their effort is being shared among those who are not properly working at the business and its success and its achievements and the revenue generation. Now, there's sort of a, a a secondary level here and that secondary level is the incentivizing for even more results. Now what you don't want to be doing is shutting out people because one person is getting really big results and the other person is doing what's fully expected of them but they simply don't achieve those results. It just doesn't come their way especially in a technology field where sometimes you put a lot of effort in and it really doesn't transmute into results. Or the results are not to the same level and degree as the individual who by fortune or just by 
sheer ability or knowledge or luck is able to get those superior results. What you do want to do though is incentivize that person. So if they do hit superior results, it's always a good thing to say, if you're going to achieve that, here's what the additional incentive, additional bonus is on top of that. That always works well with people. And, and when everybody else looks at it, they just have to rationalize it. The fact of the matter is, if that person didn't achieve that superior result, where would the company be? The company would be probably nowhere close to where it is right now. So if they're getting an extra a few points on it, whether it's uh, by way of a dividend, additional shares, some performance bonus or the like, in the larger picture, the whole company is benefiting. And the whole company typically benefits far more from those results than any one individual. Yes, that individual gets a bit more than they would otherwise get. But since the company is growing at an exponential level because of those superior results, that greater good and greater results is shared all over the company. So whereas, let us say, um, everybody was to get a quarter and there were four people. So and the results would be 25, 25, 25. Now you get superior results and instead what you do is you pay out a 20% premium on that or 20%, take 20% off the top, but the results have doubled. So now you have 200 units and what you do is you end up paying to this superior results that has completely invigorated the company, completely taken it to another level. And typically it's only for the one time or maybe one or two years, but there's a payment out. So instead of from the 200 units, that person would get 20%, let us say. So it would be 40 units, which would leave uh, 160 units to be split among the four. So it ends up being 40, 40, 40, 40. So yes, that person would get 80 units for that particular year. Everybody else would get 40 units for that particular year. And then oftentimes it would go back and revert to the old system of 25, well, one quarter per person. Now, what, what's in that result? If you had stayed with the old system, you would have achieved simply a 25 unit achievement. Great. If you go with the other system, you've now increased the unit dispersion to 40 units for everybody with the exception of the person who achieved the result in the first year. So that he gets 80 units. And then in subsequent years, you move back to a quarter. So now you're at 200. So everybody's getting 50, 50, 50. The incentive is there. It works to everybody's benefit. The person who achieved it gets the performance benefit and feels good and incentivized to achieve it because they, their known results have produced significant outcomes. And what then happens it creates a corporate culture where people strive to achieve their goals because, and they also strive to support those who are achieving those goals. Because if the person who achieves a specific goal, yes, they will be incentivized to realize more and more of these performance bonuses, however they are structured. And meanwhile, everybody else they might not have the same capabilities, they might not have the same intellect, they might not have the same focus in the business. But as you can see, they are receiving the same type, they are receiving results from creating and building upon a corporate culture that supports others to achieve those higher levels of development of the company. Now this has to be communicated to everybody so that they understand what these varying levels of incentivizing for performance and results will be. And naturally, what needs to be done is it needs to be structured into contracts. And why do I say that? I say that because when you fail to structure it in contracts, people do not necessarily understand the rationale for it or want to accept the rationale of giving up stuff. You can explain it better at the outset set it out and show where the potential is. 
and then it is committed and is locked in. So people are not concerned about losing the benefits achieved through their hard work. They know when they come into the year, they come into the business, that their efforts will be rewarded. And at the same time, their failure to act will have potential repercussions. Their failure to contribute, to give their efforts that they're expected of them. And that is why structuring this stuff into your contracts, especially in the technology field, is extremely important and something that you should be looking to do. And to do this, you need, we strongly recommend a knowledgeable and experienced business lawyer to help you with that contractual development. It is critical that you get the ultimate performance because what you're doing is not only benefiting yourself and bene you're benefiting others. And to have others assist you in the development of your business, to be incentivized to perform, that is the value and this is what leadership represents. And this is why you need strong contracts to effectuate these kind of developments. Uh, we trust that this YouTube video has once again been informative. Please like the video, subscribe to our YouTube channel and we look forward to seeing you again as we look to provide more insights into making your business that much more successful by utilizing the law and contractual agreements to your better advantage. Thank you.